well uh, so uh, now we're going to discuss about the uh, economic efficiency and public policy part 2 uh, in this part we focus uh, mainly on uh, public policy uh, that how we can deal with the uh, monopolies and uh, uh, other uh, cartels so now we see that uh, there is a need to regulate those uh, uh, monopolies which are natural monopolies because we cannot convert those into a competitive market uh, which is not an efficient uh, to do that so for that reason there is a need that we regulate those natural monopolies so the clearest case for public intervention arises with the natural monopolies and found mainly in public utilities such as electric electricity transmission and natural gas distribution and we also observed in our local area that uh, these transmissions of electricity and natural gas are through only one firm uh, and that have a, a monopoly so requires large and ex expensive distribution now why these are natural monopolies because these firms require a law require large and expensive distribution network the size of the market is such that only a single firm can achieve its minimum efficiency so that's the reason behind these natural monopolies now one response to solve this uh, issue of natural monopolies uh, is that for the government to assume ownership of the firm or here in canada we call them as a crown crown corporations so the first solution is that the government should own those uh, natural monopolies and by this way definitely the objective is not to making a profit uh, uh, objective is to provide this service or uh, utility to the consumer without any incentive or without any uh, 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 without any uh, incentive to uh, make a profit so they want to uh, just a uh, break even or something like this so another response to the problem so this is a one response that the government uh, should uh, take the ownership of those another response to the problem of natural monopoly is to allow private ownership but to regulate the monopolist behavior the other way is that the, the firm should run under the private ownership but we have a strong regulatory bodies those who regulate their operations their pricing their quantities and all these things so three general types of pricing policies exist for regulated natural monopoly so now if we uh, are uh, adopting the private ownership of these natural monopolies uh, but we want to regulate it their prices so how we can do this there are three, there are three ways one is that we uh, uh, allow them to charge uh, pricing equal to the marginal cost so marginal cost pricing this is what we call it as a marginal cost pricing the other one is two part tariff that they that they allow them to uh, convert their billing into two part tariff or pricing into two parts and the third one is that average pricing average cost pricing so these are the three uh, models available if we want to uh, run the natural monopolies in the private sector now marginal cost pricing so if we say that you have to price uh, according to the marginal cost so and this is our demand function this is a marginal cost function and we determine the quantity where the demand is equal to marginal cost and by this way we see that the that the quantity is this and the price is going to be this because this is a demand curve and the cost for this producing this uh, this much quantity is this so the firms are always in a in a loss situation so the outcome is allocatively efficient uh, and the price is set where the market demand curve and the marginal cost curve intersects and the monopolies are suffer losses in that case now the second situation is that we divide uh, and normally it happens like like in, in in our case as well like we are paying electricity bill we are paying natural gas uh, uh, bill or water bill now these bills have a two part one we call it as a line rent or a meter rent or all these or a collection rent uh, and the other part is based on how many units we are consuming so this is what we call it as a two part tariff uh, that is the the first part is a fixed part so if they know very well every firm and how many connections they are selling and how much revenue they can generate with this fixed part of the tariff and how many revenue they can generate on the variable part of the uh, revenue 
So to, uh, the situation of losses with marginal cost pricing cannot be sustained for long and that's the reason that uh, we entered uh, the, uh, the, uh, the economists developed this method of two part tariffs. So consumer pay one price to gain access to the product and the second price for each unit consumed. Now, the third method what we discuss uh, just is average cost pricing. So average cost pricing is like we price according to our demand curve where they are equal to long run average cost curve and by this way the price is this and the quantity is this. So allows the natural monopolies to set prices just high enough to cover total cost thus generating neither profit nor losses. The firm produces the level of output at which the demand curves cut the LRC curve. So when a natural monopoly is with the uh, following average cost pri set price equal to the marginal cost, the outcome is allocatively efficient, but the firms will be suffered losses. The first situation uh, for a natural monopoly is with following average cost, a policy of average cost pricing will not result in allocative efficiency because price exceeds the marginal cost. So in this method, we are in this way that uh, natural monopolies behave uh, is not going to be an allocative efficient. Now the problems, uh, long run investment uh, for a natural monopolies, average cost pricing often leads to an inefficient long run investment decision because they are not making profit, not loss at that point with too little capital being uh, built. Uh, very long run uh, innovation. Innovation can erode market power through creative destruction. Uh, uh, like for example, telecommunication industry and consider the case of electricity. So in the very long run, if there is a possibility that we can supply the electricity without a huge network of cables and uh, wires, uh, then it is possible that we can uh, destroy this uh, creative destruction can be possible. Uh, but right now, and, and we see this uh, in the in case of a, uh, telecommunication, they, sh they, they start sharing the uh, network, uh, physical infrastructure of the networks, like one, one antenna and on which uh, everyone is plugging on his own boosters and all these things. Uh, regulation of natural monopolies, problems with the regulation. Regulation cannot precisely determine demand and price regulation turns into profit regulations or a rate of return regulations and the concept of a marginal cost and allocative efficiencies are often ignored in a regulatory uh, decision. So these are the problems, genuine uh, existing problems with these regulations that we want to regulate the natural monopolies. So growing skepticism about reg regulation, advanced industrial countries push towards the deregulation and privatization because regulation often reduced competition and public ownership was not clearly more efficient. So rising uh, corporation concentration, giant tech firms and networks. So we see that uh, the private sector, they also they are creating monopolies. So this is all uh, related to public policy with reference to the natural monopolies because we all are dealing with these natural monopolies. We all have to buy the utilities and we are all have to deal with the corporations who are uh, making profit on the basis of their networks. Uh, so how, uh, what problems can be, uh, regulators uh, can resolve by these solutions, but with these solutions also there are some problems. So it is the best way that we go towards the uh, more liberalization of the economy without regulations and all these things. So stay tuned for the third part.